but now it's time to grow your business, right? So um, talk to me about how you guys compete with other players in, in your specific markets. There's a lot of people growing and selling weed. Um, what is your strategy and how you stand out to, to get the consumers? Well, we try to grow the very best weed that we can grow. And have good connections, friendly connections, and ethical connections with a lot of people. We started our brand, and um, it's just a matter of selling yourself, selling your product, and letting people know that each and every time they buy your product, they're going to buy the same quality product from one um, one joint to the next, or one bag of flour or whatever product you're um, producing. So you have to stand out. We're, we're on a road with several big corporations that have a hundred acres. And uh, we're trying and hopefully we will stand out because we're a small family farm with very, um, ethical and efficacy is very very important to us with a lot of the big ones they're just trying to get a product out if it doesn't pass you know uh the the tests it's going out anyways um you know we're we're trying to be the kind of business that we hope everyone wants to be someday we treat our employees special. So all of our employees have been here for quite a while. And um, that's how we're trying to do it. Yeah, I love what, what Franny said, uh, trying to grow the best product every year. Um, talking about relationships are huge. Um, she also said about just quality, being consistent. You know, that's one thing I think the consumers will always love is that you're being consistent. Um, family owned and operated. So being authentic, um, I think really goes a long way, especially with this generation of, um, of people just wanting something just authentic and, and real. And you can't put a price tag on that. Um, I think the other thing too, uh, that really plays big, because there's a lot of bigger guys. We love being the small people, the small farm. Um, I was listening to a, a podcast um, called uh, I was looking to listening to a podcast, How I Built This by Guy Raz. And somebody got on there and he was like, he owned this uh, mattress company. And he goes, a small business is a good business, you know, and a local business could be a good business. You don't have to get caught up thinking you have to make millions of dollars. It's really about what your profit margin is, right? A lot of these companies make millions of dollars, but they don't turn a profit. That's great and all, but if you could be a small business and turn a profit, that's excellent. So um, that was really, really key to us and just being, uh, like I said, authentically who we are. And it's different. Um, and, and I mentioned in Washington State, you can't be vertically integrated. So our consumer are bud tenders, you know, because they're the ones selling the product in stores. And then our, our audience also are people who are buying the cannabis. So we have a lot of people, you got to push the bud tenders to sell your product. You got to educate them on how you grow it, what that looks like. It's a lot of education happening right now um, to the store owners, inviting them to your farm, doing farm visits, okay. um, giving the bud tenders they like gear. And so, you know, you gotta give them some swag and educate them on, on um, your product and how you grow it so they can feel connected to it. So when they're selling it to the consumer, the consumer comes in and they're asking the bud tenders, hey, what's good? And you know, that's how they sell the product. So it's, it's really about being connected um, on all, all areas. Joy, do you guys, does Washington have um, distributor licenses now? Are, are you, are, is there groups that kind of sell for you or is it still kind of like you're the brand going straight to the store and having those types of relationships? Yeah, you're the brand going dr directly to the store. Uh, there's no distributor license. You can only get a producer, processor or a retail license. You can also get a testing license or you can get a delivery license. So there are various companies that deliver product. Um, there, are there are brokers as well. 
Um, so people who are in between, um, come on, Santana. <laughs> He's just killing me right now, man. Uh, and I took it on three walks. Um, and so there, there are people in between from a farm to the, the uh, retailer, but um, there's no distributor license. Franny, California is one large state and I'm sure you're probably working with the distributor. What are some of the things that you're looking for when you're being courted by all these distributors that are wanting to um, rep you? Well, <laughs> one of the most, we, we actually do have a distributor's license ourselves oh, in cool. California. However, at this point we've been selling to, uh, you know, buyers. You have to look, uh, the most important thing is that you get paid for your product. And that can be tricky. So you have to really establish a good working, honest, trusting relationship with whoever you're selling your product to because very few buyers come in with the cash on the spot. They always need to, they'll put a deposit down, but then they take the product and you're at the mercy of them selling it to, you know, get your, get your money. So, um, yeah, sometimes we, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to say sometimes the bigger isn't always better. Just like with the cannabis cultivators, because, you know, distributors are carrying 50, hundred brands. And how do you get your um, brand out there when they're with the stores? So both of you are saying these relationships are important and finding the people that you groove with, finding the people that are going to know you and really have that understanding of who you are and being able to um, wrap you like a friend and family versus just numbers. It's all legwork. It's all the people. It really is that, as Joy was saying, it's the relationships that you build with whoever you're dealing with in this business, whether it's the county, your suppliers, or your buyer. Okay, what about marketing? Like, I know that marketing is, is quite tough in the cannabis industry because of a lot of rules and regulations. Um, and both of you guys are relatively small farms compared to the big players. So how do you guys compete in marketing? Like, how do you get consumers to know about your product to buy on shelves that you don't own? You don't own those shelves. Well, you make friends with the people who do own the shelves and that's a good thing. And we uh, have people, and if any of your audience would like to follow us, they can follow us on Instagram or our, through our website or through Twitter. Uh, but but basically, it's the product you produce. That, to me, is the bottom line. You've got to produce a product that people want, that buyers come back for, that tell you this is the best. This is the best flower we've smelled, we've smoked. Um, you know, that's that's the number one thing. When you're a small operator, you really have to produce a good product. Product and um, like Franny said, it's all about relationships, product, and then pricing it according, accordingly. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll go into retail stores and we'll find out where's the product placed, how much is it, who we're competing against, and what does that look like? Um, and then also trying to run specials with that store, um, you know, uh, hoping that, and it's really, really up to them if they want to run a special or not, because you can't really tell people how to run their business. But um, having those relationships with people saying, hey, you know, we have this strain, it can be exclusive to your store. Um, you know, can we sell this product to you guys and you pump it out? You know, just coming up with different creative ideas um, uh, like that. And then also really, really connecting with the bud tenders. I cannot express that enough up here because those are the people that are front facing the customer um, and that are kind of guiding the customer to, you know, and I'm, I, you know, I'm speaking here in Washington state. I know it's different in every state, but um, really they're, they're the people that are the ones kind of guiding the customer um, into what they kind of want. Um, and so just connecting with them and making sure that those relationships are great. And then trying to do really good um, uh, connections on our social media 
we don't have a marketing person. We have Hootsuite and we just post on there and come up with different creative ideas to post. And hey, we're going to come up with, um, we know people like photos a lot that are like people's faces. So we either try to post our dog uh, often in one of the greenhouses or we post like my grandmother. Like we try to make it a family affair to show people like, hey, we're real. We're trying to be as transparent as possible so they can kind of get an insight to the industry. Um, a little bit of education in there, but they can see who they're buying their cannabis from because people want to know who they're buying their, their cannabis from. I love it. I love it. I love the grittiness. Um, we're going to, I see some hands raised from the audience. Uh, Hugo, I see you. You're being patient. Um, Nicole, you had a great question in the chat. I want you to ask that um, unmuted if, if you don't mind. But before I turn it over to the audience, quick question or last question for both of you ladies. What's next for you? You've, you've walked us through getting the application, uh, getting the license. You did your first 60 days. You're talking about growth. So my final question to you guys is, What's next for your business? What's THC Co. doing next? Great question. We're just trying to survive and pay our taxes. You know, um, <laughs> I you know I know we can all talk about that. Uh, that my dog was doing that to me a little bit a while ago. Randy's so funny. Um, but uh, I, here's here's where I think we see the next step for our company and our business is using our platform to try to shine light into the industry and wanting to get more women, more minorities, more people of color, more black people in the industry um, and, and using our platform to talk about social equity, talk about the tax dollars that are being um, generated from this industry and hoping that those can be reinvested in the communities that were most harmed by the war on drugs. That's kind of like our thing. I know it's a social mission, but it's a part of who we are we're from a community that was, you know, devastated by the war on drugs. We still live in this community. We see all the tax dollars that are being made from the plant. And we're hoping that those can be reinvested back into these communities. So we'd love to use our platform like that and to continue getting better, um, being more efficient in our growing technique and our model. We're really proud about that and how, you know, it, it how we were able to come this far, but we continue want to get better um, and expand the brand uh, and, try to uh, get our costs down, our COGS, cost of goods uh, down to grow the, the cannabis. And you, Franny, what's next for you guys? Oh, what's next is um, building out more acres of our outdoor grow. All of the things that Joy mentioned about <laughs> Um, you know, lowering our costs, uh, et cetera, and um, building our brand out. We're trying to get our manufacturing license now so that um, we can have more products out. We Right now, we're able to produce um, pre-rolls, but we want to do all of the rest of the uh you know, produce a lot of different products. So that's what's next for us. Right on. Well, I appreciate you ladies holding it down. Badass women in the cultivation space.